Hi, my name is Mike Freeman, and I'm a hydrologic technician with the USGS office here in Salt Lake City, Utah. I would like to take a few minutes to talk about making readings and inspections for gauge sensors using SWAMI. For this screencast, we will look at the following sensors. Non-contact radar, wire weight, reference point, and crest stage gauge. For this example, all sensors that we will be looking at are in the sensor inspection task. We will begin by entering readings for a non-contact radar gauge. Start by clicking and highlighting non-contact radar gauge. You'll notice that you can go straight to the gauge readings and an inspection is not required before entering a radar gauge reading. Click the readings button to go to the sensor readings page. You can manually enter the time by clicking the blank field next to the time. Or you can click on the time to have the field automatically populated to the nearest minute. You can also click on the calculator to assign a time to the gauge reading to the nearest second. To do this, click the Now button and then click Done to return to the sensor reading screen. Next, enter the gauge reading from your radar gauge and the accuracy of the gauge reading. You can do this by typing in the field or clicking the calculator and entering the appropriate values. After the time and the radar gauge have been populated, click Add to populate the gauge reading. After the gauge reading has been added, click Done to return to the sensor inspection screen. You can also click on the inspection button of the radar gauge, which provides a large comment box to provide any descriptive field notes regarding the, the radar gauge. As an example, you may document that the radar is clear of burrowed insects. Click Done to return to the, the sensor inspection screen. The next sensor we will demonstrate is a reference point reading. First we will start the reference point reading by entering our reference point information within the inspection screen. In the inspection screen there is a large comment box to document the reference point, the reference point elevation, and the tape down or tape up to the water surface. When making a reference point reading, I include a brief description of the reference point being used, the reference point elevation, and the readings for the tape up or tape down values used to compute the gauge height. Next show the math for determining your gauge height. Be sure to include as much information as possible for all the reference point readings. For this example, you can see the information and the math used to determine a gauge height of 2.05 feet. After the inspection is complete, click Done. SWAMI provides an automated way to calculate your gauge height readings. This is dependent on how the sensors are set up in site visit, requiring the measurement points to be set up and up to date. In this demonstration, site visit has not been configured with the reference point elevation, and we will simply enter the computed gauge height reading into SWAMI. To do this, click on the readings button. Enter the time of the reading and enter the computed RP gauge height. Click add after you've populated all the fields and click done to return to the sensor inspection screen. The next sensor we will review is a wire weight gauge. When clicking on the wire weight gauge, you will notice that we cannot enter gauge readings as the button is not active. Prior to making a wire weight gauge reading, you need to fill out the information in the inspection page to activate the readings button. On the wire weight gauge inspection page, you are required to enter the reading of the check bar prior to making a water surface reading. Enter the dial reading of the check bar measurement. Next, document the elevation of the check bar determined during your last levels. If you change the check bar reading, note the time and the new check bar dial reading in the fields below.
there is a comment box to provide any additional information regarding the wire weight. After all the fields in the inspection page are populated, click Done to return to the sensor inspection page. You will notice after populating the fields in the inspection task, the reading button is active and you can now enter wire weight gauge readings. Simply click on the readings button and add the gauge height, reading, accuracy, and the time of the gauge reading. After all fields have been populated, add the gauge height reading and click Done to return to the ins sensor inspection page. Lastly, we will look at a crest stage gauge reading. Similar to the wire weight gauge, the readings box is not active and you have to inspect the crest stage gauge before entering a reading. In the crest stage gauge inspection page, populate the empty fields with the drop down menus for each field. Add necessary comments to the comment box. In this example, we note that there is a mark at 2.75 feet and that we change the cork. After all the fields have been populated, click Done to return to the sensor inspection page. You will notice after filling out the crest stage gauge inspection page, we can now enter readings. In the readings page, you will enter the gauge height of the mark in the crest stage gauge. This will require you knowing your crest stage gauge reference and elevation. In this example, our crest stage gauge index is at an elevation of 2.25 feet. To determine the gauge height, either subtract or add the cork reading from your CSG index elevation. In this example, we will take our CSG index of 2.25 feet and add our cork reading of 2.75 feet to get a CSG reading of 5 feet. If you do not know the estimated date, leave this field blank. If you have prior knowledge of when the peak occurred, provide an approximate date of when the mark occurred by clicking the calculator next to the empty field of estimated date. A calendar will pop up allowing you to select the estimated date. In this example, we will say that the peak occurred on March 15, 2014. Once the readings and the estimated date have been populated, click Add followed by the Done button to return to the sensor inspection page. This concludes our demonstration of sensor inspections. If you have questions on making gauge readings or inspections with these sensors, please contact the SWAMI Help Group at the email address shown or visit the FIS webpage at the address shown.